Yo, what's going on, Tank Clan? It is your boy King Tank next here, back with another video, and you guys already know the deal. But what we're going to be doing today is, well, what if Deku was the son of Thanos? And I've been thinking about this a lot, and how I'm going to do it. I even talked to Neptune at one point about how to do it, but the more that I think about it, the more I realized that like this idea that we originally had just was not going to work. Some I apologize in advance, Neptune. I'm just going my own way. And another thing is, um, I have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in checking that out, I will leave a link to that in the description. You will see the breaks and all that if you are interested in supporting me further. But you guys aren't really all that interested in here. Now, let's roll that intro. Uh, Zuko Midoriya was a troubled kid growing up. The main reason for this was fairly simple. He was the son of a villain. Not just any villain though. You see, his father's name was Thanos. Yeah, you guys already know where I'm going with this. You see, Thanos was not just any sort of villain. He was an international villain. He was considered one of the world's greatest threats with how powerful he was. At times, even people like All Might were given a run for their money with how strong Thanos was. Thanos was strong enough to send even the strongest of heroes flying. He was practically an unstoppable threat. He had he had super strength, he had telekinesis, he had a high intellect. Matter of fact, people had even uh, spiked rumors amongst themselves that some of Thanos' abilities, they weren't even abilities that he was born with. They theorized that although he might have been born with a super strength quake or a super intelligence quake, he probably experimented on himself over the years in order to grant himself more abilities, in order to grant himself more power. This was what people were theorizing, and many people hearing that would immediately become more and more unnerved each day, wondering if there was any sort of morality to Thanos, what would he not be willing to do? They've They've all heard about Thanos. Thanos was essentially the boogeyman of this quirk society. He was somebody that you did not want to encounter on any sort of day. Thanos was just somebody who was superior to most beings and he even had an unusual look as well that made him look more alien in appearance rather than human. Even even when taken into consideration, well, mutant type quakes. People like Gang Orca, people have even said, looked more human than Thanos. Which is really saying something. You see, Thanos, he had purple skin and a furrowed chin. He looked more like a gremlin, a gremlin than anything, or something along these lines. You could say, a gremlin or any other sort of creature but the point is that Thanos he did not look all that human and this was mainly because of his genetics him having some sort of genetic well lottery of sorts in which he ended up getting the well the end of the stick in terms of appearance at the very least. You see, he wasn't originally supposed to look like that. As a matter of fact, he even had a brother at one point who was known to be rather handsome. He was even a hero and he was considered one of the most attractive heroes at that. Unfortunately, when it came on to Thanos though, he was not blessed with these looks. Instead, he was given incredible raw strength and incredible intelligence but he was also cursed with 
an unruly appearance, a sickening appearance in some people's minds. But despite all that, he still managed to, well, find love in a way. Not really love, more so, Thanos was just able to uh, find a way to, well, uh, turn that into an advantage. He managed to turn his unsightly appearance into something that could really run the world. He made his face recognizable throughout the years. And because of his actions throughout the years, he was considered a very heinous criminal. Many heroes had tried to stop Thanos throughout the years, but they were all too weak, including All Might, which left many people in despair. Even All Might was surprised to find out that Thanos was this strong. He never thought that there could be anybody this strong. He thought that All For One was supposed to be the strongest villain out there, but apparently not. Apparently, there were people even stronger than All For One, a person who could literally steal other people's quirks. And that was unnerving to All Might. Just how much more powerful was Thanos in order for him to take down most heroes just like him and just more heroes okay basically in order to in order to take down All Might was already a feat in and of itself and that made All Might terrified and then he just imagined how it would be like on any other continent or country I should say he wondered if any of the heroes in the other countries could stand any sort of chance against the one known as Thanos. Any sort of children Thanos ended up having, they would have been rather recognizable as well. Thanos was known to be a rather promiscuous villain, having slept around quite a bit at times. He wasn't really a family man either. He never really stuck around to see his kids or anything. He just knew that they existed for the most part. And when it came on to somebody like Azuka Midoriya, who was the son of Thanos, that made his life very hard, you could say. He was born rather normal at first, but as soon as his fourth birthday hit, he would notice patches of purple skin on him. He didn't understand what the whole story was behind that, but eventually people would begin to get a clue. Over the years, Azuku would develop more and more purple skin, and he would begin to look more and more like his father. This was something that this was actually something that Inku had feared. She had feared that Izuku would end up looking like his father. She had already heard the stories of how there were more just like Izuku. There were more kids like Izuku out there that were also the kids of Thanos. And they ended up inheriting his appearance. Well, some of them. Others, they managed to get away in terms of appearance for the most part. They just managed to actually get the lucky draw, in all honesty in which they were just born rather powerful, they had powerful quirks. But when it came on to Azuku, he was not one of these lucky kids. Sure, Azuku ended up awakening a powerful quirk in terms of him having rather powerful telekinesis, you could say. Sort of a mixture between his mother and his father to an extent. But when it came on to his appearance, that was all Thanos. This was something that Inko had feared because she knew exactly what was going to happen. Izuku would obviously get bullied. He would get bullied for his appearance and many people would immediately find out that he was the son of Thanos. Many people called Izuku a villain in the making. Many people believed that Izuku was a freak of nature. They didn't want to accept somebody like Izuku into their lives. Nobody wanted to accept Izuku into their schools either. Nobody wanted to be Izuku's classmates. Even the teachers gave Izuku weird stares at times. But Izuku couldn't help it. He couldn't help that he was born this way. He couldn't help that he was a son, he was a son of a villain, although the greatest villain alive at this point 
he couldn't help it. He wasn't in control of any of that. As a matter of fact, Zuku, he had a disdainment towards his father. You see, his father basically walked out to walked out on his family before Zuku was even born. As soon as Inko mentioned that she was pregnant, Thanos had immediately left. At least that was the story that his mother had gave him. And that was what made Azuku angry throughout the years. Many people constantly comparing him to his father as well. Somebody that he hadn't even met. How fair could that be? You call him a villain, but you act like more of a villain than he does. Azuku, he didn't even want to have anything to do with his father. He hardly even considered Thanos to be much of a much of a father at this point either. He saw Thanos as just another person who existed in his life. He wasn't even really part of Azuku's life to be honest. As a matter of fact, Thanos was just somebody that that had to carry the seed. He implanted some of his genes into Inko and that was it. That's as far as being a father that Thanos ever was to Azuku. Azuku had no relationship with his father whatsoever, so he didn't understand why these people would want to compare him to, to such a man like Thanos. Azuku was a rather good kid for the most part. He tried to keep, keep himself calm and composed for the most part, but people continued to push his buttons each day, calling him a villain, calling him no better than his father, calling him this and that and Azuku would, eventu would eventually reach his breaking point. He would end up socking one kid in the jaw after they called him a villain once more and even mentioned his mother, saying that his mother was no better, and calling, calling his mother slurs and all of these words would just cause Azuku to crack and that's exactly why this kid ended up with a broken jaw. Other kids, they would look on in shock and fear at what just happened. Izuku would punch the kids so hard that they had even left a crater in the wall. The kid was slammed into the wall. That wall had a crater afterwards because of Izuku's punch. That's how powerful the punch was. And many kids, they would just look at Izuku. Some of them would still whisper that he was a villain, and Azuku would roar, calling, uh, calling them more of a villain than him. He said for them to all call him villain. Go ahead, say it loud. Say it, uh, say it loud so that he could hear. Say it, say it so loud that everybody in the room, matter of fact, not even in this room, everybody in the second room and third room could all hear it. Say it, say it loud. For, say it loud for the whole world to hear. As a matter of fact, go ahead, say it. Guess what's going to happen right after? Sure. I may be a villain, but what is you? If I'm a villain, and I'm better than you, what does that make you? You act worse. You act worse than me on a day-to-day -day basis. I try to keep myself calm and composed. I know immediately that every day I walk into this classroom, I get stares from the teachers. I get called slurs by my my fellow peers, I get called a villain every single day. I get harassed on the daily, all because of who my father is. And yet, I don't get any sort of peace of mind as soon as I lash out. I'm considered a bad guy, but you all immediately call me a villain when I try and be nice. So what does that make you all? Many people would try to see that they were heroes in the making. Azuku was just a villain in the making because of who his father was but Azuku would try and hush them up saying that no that's not how it worked he had a mind of his own Thanos for all of his abilities he did not necessarily have a hive mind ability of his or at least he didn't believe so without less that little point of him not believing so he would have kept that to the back of his mind he wouldn't have actually said that out loud he would have straight up said that Thanos, although strong, he had no bearing on his life whatsoever. The only bearing he had on Izuku's life was in his creation. That's literally it. And even then, he walked out on them before Izuku was even born. So he couldn't even really say that. Izuku was 11 at this time, by the way. And 
as soon as he had done all of this, some of the teachers, they would have noticed all of the commotion and they would have saw what happened. As soon as a kid saw that a teacher was there, they would immediately point fingers to Azuku saying that he was the one to have started all of this. They would have made up lies saying that Azuku had just punched this defenseless kid unprovoked. They would make up all of these lies, these, uh, uh, these lies on the spur of the moment in order to make sure that Azuku would, would look like the bad guy in this situation just to... Uh, and just to well throw dirt upon Azuku's name more and more each time Azuku would just scratch his head in annoyance and anger. Many of the teachers would take the side of the kids and they would call the number for the Japanese police department. I believe it's actually kind of different for Japan. Like my American folks, you guys probably know it as 911, but I think at one point it was mentioned. Like when I looked it up on Google at one point, it was shown that it was like 119 for like Japan apparently. So that's the number they would end up calling. And of course, in the end, police officers would arrive in order to detain Izuku. They would make sure that they had some heavy artillery weapon weaponry as well because they as soon as they heard that it was a son of Thanos, they knew that they were not going to be playing any games when dealing with a child. They didn't want to risk. They didn't want to risk it at all. They had. A, they had a bad feeling that this kid was too powerful for his own good, and they were somewhat right, because Azuku had a very powerful telekinetic quirk. He also had incredible strength. Uh, well, that being shown when he literally punched a kid into a wall. He literally broke a kid's jaw and sent and sent that kid flying into a wall, leaving a crater as well. But that wasn't even Azuku at full strength either. That was Azuku holding back. And the police department, of course, they didn't want to risk it. As a matter of fact, some heroes actually came in as a form of backup in order to deal with the child. They would actually be able to detain Azuku without much resistance, surprisingly. And they went put Azuku in some sort of, well, detention center or... Yeah, you could say a detention center for right now. Azuku would be held in confinement. He would be in a sort of solitude for the most part, just thinking about his actions. He was thinking about everything that he could have done differently. He imagined what it was like for his mother right now. His mother was struggling as is and just trying to provide Azuku with a decent life and these kids just wanted to push his life more and more towards villain, villainry, villainy, villainry, villainy. <laughs> These kids always wanted Azuku to be a villain for some reason. They wanted to make their own opinions of Azuku be justified for whatever reason. And now these kids were finally getting it for some reason. And now Azuku felt as if he screwed up. Well, he knew exactly why. He generally did screw up punching that kid. And now these kids all had some sort of date on Izuku. They had just enough evidence in order to in order to use it against Izuku. They had just enough evidence in order to plant a trap for Izuku. And this would have would have of course sent Izuku to this location, this juvenile center. And he's literally, and he was literally being held in confinement, literally being held in solitude, just to reflect on his life so far. Honestly, Azuku realized just how depressing his life was. He never really had any true friends. As soon as he began to develop those purple patches of skin, well, yeah, purple patches on his skin, I should say. Many people immediately began to switch up on Izuku, believing him to be the son of Thanos, and, well, rightfully assuming so. But to say that he was going to become just like his father 
was something that always annoyed Azuku, who never understood that sort of logic. But he would just continue to meditate on his experiences, thinking of ways that he could have done better. He was literally only 11 years old for crying out loud, so there was probably a better way that he could have handled his emotions, but in the spare of the moment, he just couldn't take it anymore. He was so sick of people. He was sick of how people treat each other just for something that they could not control. And days would go by until Azuku would actually be met by his mother and a couple of strange people, you could say. From the looks of these people, they didn't appear to necessarily be police officers. As a matter of fact, they looked to be wearing suits and ties. Were they lawyers or something? He knew that his mother worked a pretty decent job, but surely she wasn't able to afford to get him some good lawyer lawyers or anything. Yeah, she was able to provide like an appointment for them, but that was pretty much it. They were able to get an appointment, but when it came, but when it came on to Having a lawyer, a good lawyer at that, something like Phoenix Wright or something. Oh no, he knew that his mother couldn't afford that. He was young, but he wasn't stupid. These people would reveal themselves to actually not be lawyers, but people who had began to grow an interest towards Azuku. They had actually looked into his history and found out that he wasn't actually that bad of a kid. He was actually well mannered for the most part. He was just provoked that day. These kids just lied about it. They saw the cameras and in and through the camera footage they realized that Azuku and yeah, he did act rather sporadically. He could have handled the situation better, but they understood where Azuku was coming from. They sympathized with Izuku to an extent. Sure, they wouldn't necessarily know what it was like. What it was like to live the life of Izuku, walk in the shoes of Izuku Midoriya each and every day. But they understood that he was suffering. They wanted to provide Izuku with a better life, you could say. And they would introduce themselves as people from the Hero Public Safety Commission. They wanted to help Azuku. They wanted to help better Azuku's life. They asked Azuku what exactly did he want to be when he grew when he grew up. And Azuku did mention that hey, he actually wanted to become a hero. He wanted to become strong enough in order to actually defeat his father one day and bring about a new light towards the world, be able to save people. He knew that All Might was strong, but he wasn't strong enough. He needed to become even more powerful than All Might, even more powerful than Thanos, if he ever stood a chance in this world. He knew that this was a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and he knew that the only way that you could ever truly be respected in this world was through power and strength alone. So that's why Izuku wanted to become a hero for respect and to also help people as well. In order to help people out of these bad situations, he had gone from literally most of his life being bullied for something that was out of his control. He didn't want other people to experience the same amount of pain that he went through or well that he was going through actually. And these people from the Hero Public Safety Commission would smile hearing, hearing this. They would offer Izuku a deal. Join them. Train under them. Become a hero. And you know, they would make sure that Izuku and his mother lived a comfortable life. Izuku would feel kind of weird at first. He felt as if this was too good of a deal to be true. This seemed suspicious. Nobody besides his mother was ever this nice to him in his whole life. And these people were just people he just met. And 
they already knew that he was the son of Thanos, and he had never heard about the Hero Public Safety Com Safety Commission either. Well, that was a lie. Maybe he heard it in a couple of like interviews with All Might or something, but never really heard much about them to be of any to be of any sort of noteworthiness inside of his mindscape, inside of his memories. But these people, they seemed unusually trustworthy. He didn't know what to expect when it came on to working for them. These people from the Hero Public Safety Commission would also offer that Izuku could get out of here, get out of this solid to um, get yeah get out of this solitude, get out of this confinement in this small area. They knew that Izuku he had immense amounts of potential and him being the son of Thanos that meant that he actually did have the potential to eventually surpass his father. So they wanted to nurture that potential. They wanted to max out that potential. They wanted to see that potential blossom. They wanted to see Azuku blossom, become powerful. They wanted to help Azuku in his journey. And if he was willing to just agree to their terms, then well, things would just be a smooth ride for him from there on. Azuka would look at his mother and she would give him pleading eyes. These pleading puppy dog like eyes would be enough to have Azuku actually agree to the statements made by these guys. Not statements but agree to the offer you could say. Azuku and one of the people from the Hero Public Safety Commission would stretch out their hands and shake. This was what sealed the deal. Azuku's life was going to change very, very much. Whether it was going to be for the bad or worse, he would not know, at least for right now. That would be for far later in his life. But that is all for right now, Titan Clan. It is your boy, King Titan X, signing out. And yeah, you guys already know the deal. If you like the video, uh, maybe hit that like button. If you've, been rock if you've been rocking with my content for a little while, hey man, you, you may as well hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell. Uh, maybe leave a comment as well and share the video to anybody that might be interested in this sort of content as well. But beyond that, that's all I gotta say. Time clan is your boy King Titan X signing out. Peace.